Thank you very much for that introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think maybe uh, the fact that some of the uh, kites, if uh, you want to call them that, that I've, I flew at various times, not just about uh, electoral reform, but about uh, third level education and various other things, the fact that they didn't fl uh, fly at the time might be a fair enough indication of the problem that we have within our electoral system. Um, which is the one that Brendan has identified and I'm going to talk a little bit about. I always just like to preface the remarks I make in relation to this just uh, by stating very, very clearly that uh, the purpose of an electoral system as far as I'm concerned for a national parliament is to, to elect parliaments and governments that are representative of the people and that are capable of producing stable government and uh, the purpose of the public representative once elected uh, to a national parliament, I believe, uh, was always in the initial stages in our system to form a government, to be able to do that. Uh, and then uh, from then on, if you're not a member of government, uh, to hold that government to account uh, by scrutinizing each and every bit of their actions uh, to represent your constituencies or your constituents by scrutinizing all of the legislation or maybe even initiating a leg legislation uh, for the common good, uh, to hold the state, semi-state and uh, other bodies, national bodies to account. And in doing that, certainly to represent the views of your constituents. Um, and that, I believe, is where we should start from rather than where most people start from saying, I want to be able to hold my TD to account if he doesn't deliver the planning permission or whatever else it, it might be. Just struck me there that politicians, and I've had a little bit of time to think since the last time I was uh, down here, um, but politicians at the moment, and indeed over the last couple of years, are telling the public service that in these straitened times they must do more with less. And uh, if the public service were inclined, they might politely request the politicians uh, to cease correspondence with them for a year to help in that particular process of doing more with less. Um, would you believe I've calculated on the basis of representations that I made uh, over my lifetime in the Dáil that that would give back the equivalent of 17,000 weeks of public service time each year that's otherwise is used dealing with correspondence representations from public representatives. Can you imagine in the current climate, Croke Park agreements and everything else, what could be done with that 17,000 weeks? Um, this year alone, about 9 million euro will be taken, in, taken up in answering parliamentary questions tabled purely about local constituency and parochial matters. I'm not counting the ones, uh, about a third of the questions that actually deal with what they're supposed to deal uh, with holding a minister accountable or asking policy questions. So about 9 million is used in that. I think that at any time that's a disgrace, but in times of austerity like we have at the moment, that it is a scandal. You pose the question, is it going to change any time soon? I don't think there's a chance that it will change um, because uh, politicians, the politician that decided that he wasn't going to carry out uh, that torture of ministers or torture of civil uh, public servants wouldn't get elected the next time he faced, it, faced the electorate. And if they decided that they were going to give that up, uh, some lot of the politicians, the TDs that were elected, if some of them decided that they were going to give it up, it really would be a futile exercise because their colleagues would just uh, up their workload and the local um, councillor who was an eye in the doll seat uh, would just up his correspondence level and the same it would uh, perpetuate itself. But I think that this is one example of the self-perpetuating and inbuilt inertia that's in the electoral system that we have currently. 
there's no incentive for politicians to change the system that puts them in a job where they don't really have to do what they're elected to do. It is a responsible and a very, very serious job, uh, the job of shaping society for the benefit of all of its citizens. However, the sad reality, as far as I'm concerned, is that you don't actually have to do that job once you're elected the first time. Instead of doing what you're supposed to do, the majority of our politicians, once they're elected, pander to local interests when they're not feeding the media, um, the media beast that's there at the moment, with all due respects to the many media that are here. And feeding that media beast takes up more and more and more political time. And the reason it's fed is that politicians fear that without a high media profile, they won't be elected the next time around. And again, you go on the merry-go-round that Sean Dignan talked about uh, some years ago. In our system, it's considered a virtue to concentrate on the local at the expense of the national. But it's not a virtue. After what we've been through, surely now is the time for a comprehensive reform of all of our political institutions, and particularly, I believe, starting with our electoral system. Isn't it really what all of the political parties were promising at the last election? And at that stage, weren't they just responding to the public anger at the time because of the failure of the political system to properly regulate and oversee our banking system and our economy, and the failure of government to do the same. And one would have thought, and I certainly thought, uh, even after 30 plus years in politics, I'm still naive enough to, to believe that people were sincere in the promises that they made. I thought that that commitment from all parties to reform would be one that would be carried through, particularly, as I say, because of the circumstances. But that it's not so. It really hasn't happened yet. I believe, specifically in relation, while there are areas where reform is being carried out, specifically in relation to the area of electoral reform, I think we're going in the opposite direction. And I believe it's, that's underlined by the terms of reference and the priority list that has been given to the Constitutional uh, Convention. It's so far down the list, as far as I'm concerned, that it won't be reached in the lifetime of the current government. So, in many respects, I believe it's not just being kicked to touch, it's being kicked out of the park entirely. We've seen some moves, some tokenism, if you want to call it that, like the re reduction in the number of TDs. I think people will welcome that. We'll end up with fewer uh, TDs in the doll next time. But what's the big deal? If they continue to do what the current 166 TDs do, it really won't make any worthwhile difference. It won't ensure that we have members of parliament dedicating to scrutinizing the actions of the executive, the public service, the state, and the semi-state sector. Just pose the question, does anybody really believe that if we had 20 or 30 fewer TDs over the last decade, using our current electoral system, that it would have made one bit of difference to where we are today. I certainly don't. The major problem isn't the number of TDs, and I have no problem uh, but 10 years ago I suggested it could be reduced to 120 with a new electoral system, but it's not the number of t TDs. It's, as Brendan Halligan has rightly pointed out, it's what they do, or perhaps more accurately, what they don't do in the system that we have currently. If our politicians on all sides, including government, uh, had focused on the task that they were elected to do, rather than the parish pump politics, the outcomes, I believe, over the last four or five years could have been substantially different. If, there, if our electoral system didn't encourage short-termism, the impact of the global recession could have been less. 
uh, could have been a lot less harsh on this country and the people of this country. If our politicians, whether on the government side or in opposition, had focused on the real job that they were elected to do, then perhaps all of the wisdom that we now have in hindsight regarding unsustainable expenditure, about narrowing the tax base too much, about um, over-reliance on certain taxes, perhaps all of that hindsight would have been foresight and we wouldn't have got ourselves into the mess that we're in. Things could have been different and, and better. If the politicians had focused on ensuring that the regulators did their job, then perhaps we wouldn't be in the chronic crisis that we're now in. And I'm not naive enough to think that all of the effects of global recession, that we could have avoided them. But I think the worst aspects of where we find ourselves today, particularly in the banking sector, could have been mitigated by parliamentarians focused on the job that they should have been doing. But I suppose it's reasonable to say that was then and this is now. We've learned our lesson, haven't we? Could never happen again, won't happen again. Like hell it can't. The last election proved that politicians haven't really learned anything from it. They've been elected on the same promises, committed to the same wrong activities, as far as I'm concerned. And it's because our electoral system requires parties and candidates to tell the electorate what they want to hear. What happened in the last election was inevit inevitable, just as a repeat of that in the future is inevitable. The system ensures that the local takes precedence over the national. It ensures, again, as Brendan has says, the next election starts the day after the previous one. And that makes it very, very difficult for politicians to focus on wider policy issues, especially the not so popular ones. Uh, they rarely get considered. It's a classic vicious circle that we're talking about. It needs to be interrupted. It needs to be stopped. I believe that we should start it and hopefully there'll be some signs of that at local government level and we'll have some indication of that at the next session. I've always believed that you have to reform the local government system. Um, it's why I was committed to local government reform uh, with a focus on getting local services delivered locally. It's why the directly elected mayor proposal was put forward. It's also why we put forward the dual mandate, the abolition of the dual mandate. But that was only meant to be a start a start on an effort to disentangle the national politician from local politics and from the parish pump. And I was just saying before we started this, I noticed recently young Fine Gael have a proposal. I think we may have to go as far as they, they suggested, uh, which is to uh, actually make it illegal for TDs to be making representation uh, to local authorities. Uh, let them concentrate on the job that they have to do. I think it may be the only way that you'll stop TDs from doing that. I'd have to say from my experience, of, uh, I know that Minister Hogan, Phil Hogan, who will be speaking to you afterwards, has the courage and vision to deliver a greatly refocused government, local government system that could free up national politicians to do a real job. And he's, I strongly support his current approach to reforming local government, uh, the rationalisation uh, of uh, various local authorities, the um, uh, various um, reforms that he's mentioned. But I also believe he needs to go mo further. He should be talking in terms of abolishing the regional authorities as they are and the regional assemblies that have no real powers, responsibilities or functions. They're meaningless, powerless, um, and have no relevance in current circumstances. A proper regional structure should be put in place. I believe that that would help improve the situation. And I also believe that um, once you have a proper regional structure in place, then national politicians should be involved on making national priorities for government on the basis of the common good not localism. 
Don't get me wrong. I believe parochialism, clientelism has a place in society. Uh, it's an important one in Irish society, as it turns out. But they are bad when they are the basis for electing people to our national parliament. They're bad when they are so predominant, or the predominant factors uh, of our politicians to the detriment of, our national, of the national interest. And they're bad when a sizable part of the electorate values politicians for the clientelism rather than for honesty, integrity, and paying their taxes. I do believe that politicians should be close to their electorates. I think in Ireland it would be impossible not to be close to your electorate. You should know your, their constituents um, well. They should know their needs very well. They should represent their legitimate interests and views. But they shouldn't be a slave to the opinions of their constituents. Imagine just for a moment how real reform would change things. Instead of a TD spending a huge amount of time trying to secure, say, a medical card for a constituent, TDs would spend their time ensuring that the system worked fairly and efficiently for everybody. If the system worked like that, those that are entitled to the medical card or the planning permission or whatever else it would be would get it without any political interference. Instead of trying to manipulate our system for one constituent, the TD would be making sure the system worked for all of his or her constituents. And it's back to a point about the fairness of the system. And the, uh, people, if the electorate feel the system is fair, if we lose that sense of fairness in the system, and there is a danger that, that we could then we will be in serious trouble. The competition within our system, the way it is set up at the moment, is so great that the national interest takes second place to party political point scoring. And uh, if ever there was a time for politicians to have come together, it was prior to the last election, uh, when we were in the crisis that we were in. But the system did not allow that. And I'm not making a petty party political point here. Um, Fianna Fáil, when they were in opposition, uh, very often opposed for the sake of opposition. I'm not making that, but our system encourages opposition for the sake of opposition. We have to move away from that. Um, just finally, uh, uh, you can knock one system. Um, I've said it before. Uh, I believe that the best system that we could introduce in this country country is the mixed member proportional system, which is a combination of the direct vote and uh, a list system that Brendan talked about, the system prevalent in New Zealand, Germany and Italy. And um, it, I believe that it would work much, much better. It would retain the benefits of the current system while el eliminating the worst of its features that I've described above, the localism and the excessive um, point. Uh, of uh, constituency work entirely. The directly elected member in a single seat constituency would still be able to give uh, excellent service because, the, because of the smaller electorate. It would allow, the list system would allow parties to select candidates with particular skills and expertise. It would also allow rules to be put in place so that a much more representative group of people uh, could, be, could be elected to our parliament. And I believe that uh, the, the method would be much more attractive for many of our brightest and best who would be more attracted to politics if they could uh, get into the system, not competing entirely locally all of the time. Um, and I believe also that list system uh, candidates, deputies, would be less likely to be captured by vested interests and lobby groups because they'd be less susceptible to to orchestrated campaigns. Um, I just finally would say that I believe that the process of change in our system, that now is the time for that process of change. Um, I've seen the present government's uh, approach to electoral reform. Um, I've seen it before, I have to say. Um, that's speaking against uh, governments of which I was a member. Many of the changes that we s seek are sent off to committees 
Gareth Fitzgerald proposed change in 1987 in the manifesto. It's been in the hands of politicians for the last 25 years and it hasn't moved except from one committee to another. So I believe that now is the time to do something positive about this, to set up an independent electoral commission to handle a process that will inform the public of the various systems on offer and should lead and would lead to a referendum on a new system uh, into the future. Um, I believe that we shouldn't delay it uh, and it, it is urgent. I would agree with Brendan on that. It is urgent. It needs to be looked after very, very quickly. Vermeer,